Good to go. You're alive. All right. Thank you very much. Well, good evening, everyone. I will call the general committee meeting to order uh, in accordance with the uh, letter of instruction from the health unit and um, uh, ongoing COVID protocols. We're going to be doing tonight's double meeting and tomorrow night's planning committee meeting virtually. Uh, and then we will examine what the situation's like after Christmas. But uh, to be cautious around rising caseload, we have moved to virtual meetings for tonight, tomorrow, and we'll take a look, as I say, in the new year based on the situation at the time. Uh, we do have a relatively light general committee meeting agenda tonight. Uh, if it goes quickly, as we expect, we'll move straight into city council after that. Uh, so we'll start with the consent agenda. As always, I'll read out the title associated with the recommended motion and staff or from a staff report or the item for discussion. If it's not held, it's deemed to be approved on consent. We'll go forward to city council at the next meeting for approval. Now that is tonight uh, in order that these matters be ratified before the Christmas break. So importantly for anyone watching, uh, I should note that if there's any concern around those, uh, an item that's approved tonight, whether on consent or debated, uh, you would need to contact us right away about a deputation. And you can do that by emailing cityclerks at barry.ca, that's cityclerks at barry.ca uh, to get on the list for a deputation at the council meeting. Okay, the consent agenda items are as follows. First, staff reports. We have an item uh, staff report regarding a grant application for skill for the skills development fund supported by Georgian College. Does anyone wish to hold that? Seeing none, we'll move to the next one. The next staff report is with regards to the expropriation for Brine Drive transportation improvements, Harvey Road to Kaplan. No holds, that is approved as well. We have three items for discussion placed by members of council on tonight's agenda. First is an investigation for no parking anytime on Oric Lane. Uh, it's sponsored by Councilor Reepma. No holds, that is approved. The next one is also an investigation to improve, uh, in this case, pedestrian safety and reduce traffic speeds on the hill at Rodney, Collingwood and Cook Streets in Ward 1, run by Councilor Reepma. No holds, that is also approved. Finally, we have an item to invite the Institute for Catastrophic Loss Reduction to present, make a presentation to City Council in the new year, and that's put on by Councillor Natalie Harris. No holds on that. It is approved. As anticipated, uh, the items on tonight's agenda are relatively straightforward at this point, and have, they have all gone on consent, uh, which means we do not have any items to be debated at General Committee tonight. Uh, we are going to do inquiries and announcements at uh, council, as I noted, and that means the only item left on general committee's agenda is the circulation list. Uh, comments on the circulation lists, first December 6th circulation list, last week's. Any items from there? Okay, seeing none, uh, December 13th, Councillor Thompson. Thanks, Mayor Lehman. Um, of the circulation list, Section C of the uh, confidential correspondence in regards to the YMCA, if it could be referred back to staff. Okay, uh, and that is to refer item C1 uh, on the confidential to staff in legal services. Is that where it's going? Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Sorry. Okay, and that's uh, for a report. Yes, please. In uh, I think it's January 24th, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think that's correct as well. Okay, members of council. So that's uh, the referral motion from Councillor Thompson. Uh, I will call the question on that. Every, uh, those in favor of referring item C1 for a report. Is anyone opposed? None. That carries. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Any other items from the December 13th circulation list? Councillor Harvey. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Lehman. Actually, uh, this would be a question for Mr. Forsyth in regards to uh, his memo to do with the Allendale Digital Residential Parking Permit. Uh, sounds like a great pilot project. I was just curious uh, 
if uh, the intent would then be to potentially go citywide and get rid of the uh, the paper uh, parking permits that all of our residents currently use. Mr. Forsyth, great question. Uh, through you, Mayor Lehman, to uh, Councillor Harvey. We are actually looking at that as the next phase of the program, and we are hopeful to launch it uh, ahead of this summer. And we're working through the details with uh, Hotspot with that, uh, with our uh, uh, application, uh, our parking app uh, provider, and uh, looking to roll that out uh, again this summer. So I think there's more details to come uh, probably uh, in the new year or in the spring. So uh, that's about as much as I can kind of share at this point, I guess, until we get more into the, the details. Great. Thanks a lot. Uh, glad to hear because I know, uh, especially with COVID and stuff, a lot of residents were having uh, issues trying to get uh, replacement permits and different things. So glad, uh, glad to see something like this coming forward. Thanks, Councillor Harvey. Uh, anything else from the circulation list, members of general committee? Seeing none, I think we just set a new record for fastest general committee meeting. Uh, with that, I can, I believe, Madam Clerk, declare general committee uh, concluded. All right. So we will move straight into City Council. General Committee is adjourned at 7.08 and we'll move straight into City Council. So, um, Madam Clerk, if you are ready. Please rise as you are able. I now call this meeting of City Council to order. We acknowledge that this meeting is taking place on the traditional land of the Anishinaabe people. The Anishinaabe include the Odawa, Ojibwe, and Potawatomi nations, collectively known as the Three Fires Confederacy. We're dedicated to honoring Indigenous history and culture and committed to moving forward in the spirit of reconciliation and respect with all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people. You may be seated. Thank you very much. As noted in the uh, introduction to general committee, we are meeting virtually tonight. Members of council, executive management team and the city clerk are participating via video conference. Senior leadership team who have reports on tonight's agenda are not visible, but they are available to answer questions. Uh, the first business item on the agenda is confirmation of the minutes uh, and the minutes of the city council meeting held last week, December 6th, were, circul excuse me, were circulated. Are there any corrections to the minutes? Okay, seeing none, minutes are adopted as printed and circulated. Um, we would like to tonight recognize the winner of the 2021 Mayor's Christmas Card Contest. And I, it's a, a real shame we can't do this in person, um, but uh, with the council chambers still closed even before tonight, we would not have been able to. Uh, but that does not dis diminish in any way uh, both the success of the contest, we did have an enormous number of applicants. I don't know whether to put that down to more time uh, to, to submit entries due to COVID or less time, but either way, we had a tremendous response from the community and wonderful works of art that were submitted. Uh, and I'm pleased to announce that Shauna Omni Gray is the winner of the 2021 Mayor's Christmas Card Contest for her submission, and this is entitled Noella Glow. Uh, so congratulations, uh, Ms. Omni Gray. Uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful piece. Um, and, uh, you know, I think uh, it, I like the fact that Noella made its way into the uh, title, uh, no doubt reflecting the location in Meridian Place where uh, some of our Christmas festivities and the Noella Festival 
are happening. But um, thank you for sharing your talent with us and uh, for the joy that uh, this image will bring to those who are receiving our city Christmas card this year. And there are thousands of these that do go out across the city and in fact, across the country. Uh, so Ms. Omni Gray, you're on the call. Um, thank you for this. And uh, is there anything you wanted to tell us about your, your work? Um, it's actually her husband uh, oh. uh, getting it on her behalf. She's actually at a, a workshop right now. Um, but uh, yeah, we we sort of worked on it a little bit together, wanted to incorporate a bit of uh, Barry. This is our daughter here, and it's a very similar uh, picture that we had before. So thank you very much. Well, thank you again, and please thank uh, Shauna for us. Uh, it's a wonderful piece, and uh, we're delighted to, to have it on the city's Christmas cards this year. So thank you very much for your submission. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Somebody else wanted to be famous there, and he is. It's good It's good that we can give people a few minutes, right? Um, we're moving on now to uh, deputations on committee reports. Uh, Madam Clerk, do we have anybody who uh, requested a emergency deputation? No, Mary Lee, we have not. Yeah, okay. Uh, so that will allow us to move forward to the committee reports. Uh, Deputy Mayor Ward, it's the committee report from eight minutes ago. Go ahead. Oh, still on mute, Barry. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Thompson, that Section A of the General Committee Report dated December 13, 2021, be adopted. Thank you. It's uh, moved by Deputy Mayor Ward, seconded by Councillor Thompson, that the General Committee Report dated December 13, 2021, uh, be adopted. Comments or questions? Okay. Seeing none, I will call the question. Those in favor? Any opposed? None, that carries unanimously. And it completes the committee reports. Nope, doesn't, sorry. We have a section B for the referral. We do, section B. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Ward. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Thompson that section B of the general committee report dated December 13, 2021 be adopted. Yes, adopted. Okay, it is moved by Deputy Mayor Ward, seconded by Councillor Thompson, that Section B of the General Committee Report, dated December 13th, 2021, be adopted. This is to adopt the referral motion for the correspondence item C1 in uh, that Councillor Thompson moved. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, those in favor? Is anyone opposed? None, that carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, now, we do have, I believe, a motion without notice tonight uh, under direct motions, which is next. Councillor Gary Harvey, I think you're up. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Lehman. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, Ms. Cook, am I supposed to read out the, uh, the initial piece of it, too, to bring it forward? Yes, you are. Okay. Okay, so this is a motion without notice for consultant costs, sport tourism at uh, Sadlin Arena. Um, that pursuant to section 7.1 of the procedure bylaw 2019-100 permission be granted to introduce a motion without notice concerning uh, providing funding to tourism Barry to assist in retaining a consultant for sport tourism opportunities at the Sadlin Arena. I can speak to that Mayor Lehman if, uh, if I need uh to. Yeah, in a, in a moment, you probably okay. want to speak to the uh, the motion itself rather than uh, this one, which is just sure. the procedural. So it's moved by Councillor Harvey, seconded by Councillor Natalie Harris, that pursuant to Section 7.1 of the procedural bylaw, uh, permission be granted to introduce a motion without notice concerning providing funding to Tourism Barry to assist in retaining a consultant for sport tourism opportunities at the Sadlin Arena. It's the procedural motion just to allow it to be introduced, which does require two thirds vote. Anybody want to comment at this point? Okay, seeing none, those in favor of the procedural motion? I am as well, that's unanimous, that carries. So you can go ahead with your direct motion, Councillor Harvey. Thank you, Mayor Lehman. Uh, so moved by myself and seconded by Councillor uh, Natalie Harris, um, that uh, $42,500 from the Municipal Accommodation Tax Reserve be provided to Tourism Barry to assist with the costs in retaining a consultant to assess the needs and growth opportunities for sport tourism at the Sadlin Arena. 
Thank you very much. It is moved by Councillor Gary Harvey, seconded by Councillor Natalie Harris, that $42,500 from the Municipal Accommodation Tax Reserve be provided to Tourism Barry to assist with the cost in retaining a consultant to assess the needs and growth opportunities for sport tourism at the Sadlin Arena. Go ahead, Councillor Harvey. Thank you, Mayor Lehman. Uh, this literally just missed the cutoff for uh, getting on the regular uh, general committee agenda. Um, because I uh, it just brought to my attention very late on Wednesday and I wanted to have some conversation with staff in regards to this um, to make sure that uh, both sides were uh, of the same opinion uh, with moving forward with this. But this is in relation to uh, Tourism Barry uh, taking the lead in, uh, in looking at uh, some growth opportunities uh, through sport tourism at the Sadlin Arena, which potentially could look at an expansion, um, but it's also gonna be looking at other pieces. And uh, I know from uh, speaking with uh, Ms. Schlichter in regards to this from the city side of things, uh, this also ties in with the tourism master plan. Um, so I don't know if uh, Ms. Schlichter would like to uh, add some more color to, uh, to this uh, to provide members of, uh, of council a little, uh, little more color. Sure, uh, Ms. Schlichter, tell us about this opportunity. Uh, thank you, Mayor Lehman, and through um, you to Councillor Harvey and members of council. Uh, back in May of uh, this year, there was some direction from council uh, in regards to the Sadlin Arena and a potential grant application. Staff at that time provided a memo uh, providing some overall uh, information about uh, the, all of the events and scope and things that were happening with Sadlin. Uh, and at that time, Tourism Barry had agreed to retain a consultant to assess what the added investment and in infrastructure could attract from a sport tourism event perspective, looking at the associated economic community and business case benefits. Um, it was also thought at the time that a consultant's report could identify opportunities to refine the design, uh, and scope of the expansion that could better leverage sport tourism events to the Sadlin Arena. Um, at that time, uh, Tourism Barry has completed a, a request for proposal. Uh, in those regards, they received two, uh, and the one that uh, they would like to proceed with is at a higher expense, um, which is the result of the request to council today. Thanks very much. Uh, Councillor Harvey, anything else you wanted to say on that? I guess the only other key piece that I would add is uh, the funds being uh, requested are, uh, are from the MAT, which would have been uh, funds that have been accumulated through tourism itself. Um, and this would be a 50-50% cost sharing uh, venture moving forward, just due to the extreme costs that uh, were unforecasted at the beginning. Okay, thanks for that. Um, reminder, we're at council, so you only speak once to each item. Uh, Councillor Jim Harris, you're up. Great, thank you, Randy. I just have a question of clarification. I just want to make sure I'm not missing something, and and maybe it's in the wording, and maybe I'm being too literal in my um, uh, understanding of what's what's written. But it, it uh, in the motion, it talks about. Um, assess the needs and growth opportunities for sport tourism at the Sadler Arena. And I'm, and I'm getting the understanding, and I just want to clarify, maybe it's through Ms. Schlichter that, um, through you to Ms. Schlichter, uh, Mayor Lehman, that it's, is it also about um, assessing the needs and growth of the Sadlin Arena, not just of sport tourism? Because it feels like the way it's written, it's about assessing needs and growth opportunities for sport tourism at the Sadlin Arena, which would assume as it sits. But is it also about um, assessing the Sadlin Arena itself for growth? Is that, if I can ask Ms. Schlichter through you um, to clarify that item. Sure, Ms. Schlichter. Uh, thank you, Councillor Harris, through you, Mayor Lehman. Um, the, uh, there was a scope of work put out by Tourism Barry that looked at um, what the proposed expansion, what, how the expansion, there was an expansion that was proposed uh, so it would look at the um, what potential expansion could further drive sport tourism to the uh, Sadlin Arena. Okay, thank you. So it it, it really is about um, 
the needs of growth opportunities for the saddle and arena and the potential to, you know, increase um, opportunities for sport tourism, right? So that really is, if, so if I'm, so it is, yes, I guess is the answer to my question. It is about potential to expand or grow the saddle and arena and, and by extension, the opportunities that would then be available with sport tourism. That is correct. Okay, thank you very much. Sorry, thank you, Marilyn, that's my only question, thank you. Thanks, Councillor Harris. Uh, did I see another member of council indicate? Councillor Morales. Thank you, Mary Lehman, uh, through, you, Ms., uh, through you to Ms. Slitzer. Um, is this motion on the floor right now um, uh, in accordance with that motion, I believe, Ms. Slitzer, and I'm probably getting the month wrong, might've been May, might've been June of this year, where council, I believe I brought forward, I forget the seconder, um, where a council agreed that 50%, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, 50% of the MAT uh, staff, city staff look into to see uh, projects within the downtown perimeter on how they could possibly, that money be earmarked. Earmarked is not agreed to or committed, uh, but is this motion, I'm assuming the amount is not that large. I'm assuming it would just come from the, the other 50, the tourism portion, and did they just obviously, Councillor Harvey and Councillor Natalie Harris are bringing this forward uh, to save some time and, and get the ball rolling. Um, so I guess my question is, is this in alignment with that previously accepted motion and the, the money is coming from that 50% or does it, does it um, bump up um, that previously accepted uh, motion? Ms. Schlichter. Um, thank you, Mayor Lehman. Uh, through you to Councillor Morales. Uh, this is really related to um, the memo related to Sadlin. Staff have not yet reported back on um, the uh, motion or the request around the downtown elements. Um, and I think in terms of the MAT, this would come out of the, what is being requested is out of the city's portion of what it is collected. Okay, so it wouldn't have, it, it, the two motions can coexist is what is what I'm hearing. I would maybe defer to the, the clerk on that one. Madam Clerk. I think the question is, uh, there was a motion regarding the potential allocation of MAT funds uh, back in the spring uh, and Maybe it's a treasurer question. Is there enough money to give Tourism Barry 42.5 from city funds and still fulfill those motions? Um, I would refer to the treasurer just to, because he keeps care of the money, so. That's All right, it was lateral to the clerk, clerk laterals to the treasurer. Uh, through you, Mayor Lehman. So if you're asking, is there enough money in the reserve to meet this motion uh, in addition to the other ones? So the, currently the MAT reserve has a balance of Estimated balance of 474,000. So I would say yes, there's enough to cover this motion and the previous one. Okay, thanks very much. Councilor Morales. Perfect. No, that's it, touchdown. Thank you, Marilyn. Yeah, <laughs> nicely run. Uh, I saw two other cards, I think, or hands, Councilor McCann and Councilor Kungle, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, go ahead, Councilor McCann. Uh, thank you, Mary Lehman. And uh, I guess maybe it's a question to uh, Councilor Harvey. Um, definitely support uh, bringing more tourism to Barry and definitely through sport. And I'm just curious, uh, you know, what do you plan on attracting to the city? I'm, I'm just curious why you need to get in a consultant to broaden that scope and maybe if you have a little more insight. Councillor Harvey. Thank you, Mayor Lehman. Um, really, when you think about over the last decade, we have not seen a lot of sport tourism coming to a city of our size. And we've lost out to a lot of places like Thunder Bay and North Bay to some of these large scale, especially curling events. Curling is one of the fastest growing sports around right now. I know you might think it's pickleball, but in the winter, <laughs> in the winter, I think I'd say it's curling right now. I've never curled in my life, but uh, when you, when you look at the, uh, the return on investment uh, with uh, tourism dollars coming in from curling events, uh, it's astounding right now. Um, so this is to uh, broaden our scope and be able to be a lot more competitive in trying to secure uh, these types of events moving forward, which will bring in significant dollars that are far north. Uh, uh, most events are anywhere between six to almost 20 million. 
on average, with some of them actually surpassing even the 20 million. Hmm. You don't mind any more further questions, Mary Leanne? Yeah, go ahead. And uh, I didn't get to read your direct motion, but why just the Southland Center? Why not broaden it to the whole city of Barrie and all the other ICE services and other rec centers that we have? So this, uh, this correlates uh, back to uh, an earlier discussion that, uh, that this council had in regards to the expansion possibilities. Um, but when you compare, when you look at our arenas across the board, these smaller arenas that we have, other than attracting minor hockey uh, tournaments, um, th they're not competitive with these larger scale provincial, national, and international events that a place like the Sadlin with, uh, with a different scope to the arena uh, could attract and bring in significant dollars. Just to kind of put things into perspective, I've been told a, uh, a minor hockey tournament over a weekend brings in about a million dollars in economic development to uh, the Barrie area. Whereas the economic development from being able to secure one of these provincial, national, international events is 10 to 20 times more than that. Yeah, I appreciate the extra insight. You definitely have uh, my support, uh, but maybe just one last question I have for you. Um, and uh, other than curling, um, what else do you see attracting to the city of Barrie that, that we haven't had before? And uh, maybe a part B to that question, is this consultant connected in a way that is gonna help us uh, attract and, and actually gain um, the rights to these tournaments and, and other styles? And last, and part C to that last question I have is uh, when is he gonna? When is the um, consultant gonna start, and when will the uh, when will the uh, report be finished? So the the piece around this is uh, obviously zeroed in on the Sadlin Arena. Now, when it comes to their scope, that would very much depend. That right now the scope is very much on the Sadlin piece because of the nature of what we're dealing with. Um, I've been told this particular consultant has uh, quite a bit of experience in dealing with this exact situation in other municipalities. Um, and, and at that point, they ended up recommending that there was some, some changes made to their older facilities. Um, so that way they could secure things like, like we've never had a Memorial Cup. Mm -hmm. um, we've, we've hosted um, smaller scale curling events, but uh, we haven't done anything on a larger magnitude. Same thing with figure skating. Like, I mean, our, our building is, is large enough. There's no reason why we can't host the, a, a national championship um, out, out of that arena. It's just that the facilities that are available right now for the competitors Mm -hmm. um, are definitely not up to standards for the OHL and these other uh, high level uh, uh, athletes. Um, so that's, the, from my understanding, that would be what they hone in on. But again, it's a consultant. I think it's best that we give them general direction and let them look at what we have and then come back with their recommendations. Like I said, they've, they, I've been told they've got experience on doing several of these and they're currently in the midst of doing uh, two others for other uh, municipalities as we speak apparently. And just the part C, uh, when, when are they planning on starting obviously once they get approval from city council and when will the uh, report be finished? Do you have any clarity on that? So that's why I brought it forward this evening. So that way it wouldn't delay things by another month. Um, I've been told that it, could, it would be anticipated that the, uh, the report would come back in April or May before the summer break, um, which is why I wanted to make sure that we brought it forward tonight, opposed to waiting another month and potentially uh, not uh, having a report back uh, by the end of the, or before the summer break. And I think the critical piece too is, uh, uh, is the fact that this directly ties in with the city's tourism master plan. Yeah, you know, and you brought up kind of competitiveness, and I'm not trying to be competitive to you, but pickleball is actually North America's fastest growing sport. So just, you know. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave that debate for another time. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Kungle. Thank you. Through you, Mayor Lehman, to Councillor Harvey. I believe the question was probably answered. It was more around um, timeline in case this does lead to any type of capital forecasting opportunities or costs. Uh, I guess I'll just kind of segue my question then to saying we, we did identify 
uh, position in our budget this year around sponsorship. So be it to you or Ms. Schlichter, I'm assuming that role would only come into play not through this process as well, but but only after the fact, if we know the scope of any type of project to the Sadland Centre, then we would actually uh, engage uh, that sponsorship um, position. I didn't know if that individual would be engaged in this type of process with that consultant. Ms. Lichter. Uh, thank you, Mayor Lehman. Through you, Councillor Kungle. Uh, this particular motion uh, isn't related to a position, just simply the consultant uh, around the Sutherland piece. Um, the other areas around the motion, staff have not yet reported back on. Thank you. Maybe in quick follow up, Ms. Schlichter, um, just to further clarify, I'm assuming that role of that position tied to sponsorship would only kind of um, complement anything in the future tied to the Sadland Center if we went forward with any type of changes? Or is there um, any role sponsorship would have within the process over the next year as we look to um, attract tourism opportunities to the Sadland Center? Um, through you, uh, uh, Marilyn Mitted Councillor Kungal, a sponsorship actually falls into uh, Access Bury, so I will turn it over to Rebecca James Reed if that's okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, through you, Marilyn Mitted to Councillor Kungal. Um, the, the main purpose of this position, the sponsorship coordinator that was passed by Council, is to look at naming rights and, and major sponsorship of our big city facilities. So this individual was involved in the naming rights for the Sadlin Arena. Um, I think this is something that we could potentially have a discussion with um, Ms. Schlichter's team once we complete this um, study, if um, Council approves it. But I think it's out of scope for the position as it stands right now. Thank you, um, Mrs. James Reed. I assumed that, but I wasn't sure um, knowing that position was a bit unique if it tied in any way and complement to the consultant. So uh, thank you for that clarification and happy to support your motion, Councillor Harvey. Councillor Reedma. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councillor Harvey has answered my question. It was uh, had to do with the need for speed on this one. So uh, I'll pass. Councillor Owen. Thank you, Mayor Lehman. Uh, just a couple of quick questions, and I'm not sure if uh, Councillor Harvey or Ms. Schlichter can answer them um, or who the best person is to answer them, but uh, I'm wondering what the rationale uh, is for going with the higher cost consultant. Like, what are we gaining from going with the consultant versus the other consultant? And what's the cost differential between uh, the two that we're looking at? Councillor Harvey. And then Ms. Schlichter. Actually, I, I think I'll defer that to Ms. Schlichter because uh, plus I'll, I'm, I'm a little hesitant to uh, start publicly talking about the uh, the two different ones. I personally haven't seen them myself. It's just the information that's been provided. So I would probably pass that to response to uh, Ms. Schlichter. Ms. Schlichter. Uh, thank you, Mayor Lehman. Through you to Councillor Aylwin. The procurement process was solely that of Tourism Barry. Um, and as such, uh, again, I would think it wouldn't be, we didn't participate in the evaluation process. What was provided to us was the outcome um, there of their process uh, and recommendation and, and associated ask. Okay, I see. So, um, and to be clear, the 42,500 is just half of the cost for the consultant. Uh, and then the other half is being covered by Tourism Barry. That's correct? Uh, correct, through you, Mayor Lehman, to Councillor Elwin. Uh, there is a, a contribution already budgeted by, by Tourism Barry, and this is a, a additional ask to the city. That's about 50%, yes. Okay. Um, since we are being asked to make this decision, I, I think it would be helpful for us to have some of that information about um, you know, the process for selecting these consultants, because um, that does seem to be a big difference between um, between costs. Although maybe, maybe I'm misunderstanding this. Are we only here because we're going with the higher cost consultant option or would there be an ask for the city uh, if we had gone with the other um, consultant as well? I'm not really clear on that piece. I don't know if Councilor Harvey Lichter. or Ms. Schlichter. Yeah, I, <laughs> I think the ask is is uh, obviously Tourism Barry has through their procurement process 
chosen a more expensive uh, consultant. Uh, the um, uh, councillor is bringing a motion that the city cover that higher consultant cost. Uh, I think the question is, um, you know, is there a, a, a lower cost option uh, that would have been just paid for by Tourism Barry? I'm not sure if either of you can answer that. Councillor Harvey? Yeah, thank you, Mayor Lehman. Um, now the exact dollar value on the other one, I'm not sure if it would have covered because I can't remember what that motion was back uh, back then. But uh, what I can say, I, I have been told the uh, the scope between the two are are very different. Um, and I understand even before me uh, getting involved uh, with confirming with staff that uh, discussions occurred between the executive director of tourism, Barry, and uh, and senior management uh, in regards to this. And from what I understand, it was agreed upon uh, amongst all of them that this particular um, vendor was, was the more uh, robust one to go with and would provide them with a lot more information. Um, and again, because of it being tied into the, uh, the tourism master plan for the city, um, that's my understanding. That's, that's why this one was selected over the other one. Okay, and um, one final question. Um, so since this is being led by Tourism Barry uh, and they're retaining the consultant um, and they're asking for some city funds to do that, I'm assuming the report will go to the Tourism Barry board but will not come here, is that correct? Or will we be seeing a report coming to general committee? Uh, as a member of the tourism board, obviously if the city is paying uh, half of the funds, um, it would definitely be uh, shared with city staff. Um, not sure, like, I mean, unless there's some type of capital recommendation, uh, I guess then it uh, could come to council, but uh, uh, like, I mean, if that's something that you're looking for, then uh, that's always something that I can speak to the board and the executive director about, but I, I don't want to confirm something that I don't definitively know the answer to. Okay, fair enough. I appreciate that. Thanks. Ms. Lichter, uh, would you be able to provide any information on that? Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor Lehman. In terms of report backs in general, we have a regular uh, obligation through the implementation of the tourism master plan that we presented to you that we would report back on. Sport tourism would be part of that strategy. So as such, uh, I think it would it would be included in a form or fashion. Um, certainly we can speak to tourism very about including the report in its entirety um, as part of that process. Okay, thank you. Um... Councillor Arby, uh, is it an answer to that question? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Lehman. Uh, yeah, no, I've just uh, received a, a quick email from the Executive Director uh, of Tourism Barry, and definitely the information will be shared with Council. Okay. Are there other comments on the direct motion? Okay, seeing none, I'm just gonna make a couple myself and then I'll call the question. Um, I have a couple of concerns with this, um, choosing the more expensive consultant and then asking council to pay the bill. Uh, I would want more information before I was comfortable doing that um, because, you know, we just finished doing a budget where we cut much smaller items that benefit all our residents and to give that money to a consulting firm, uh, even though it's coming from a reserve and, and maybe a very worthy initiative. Um, I, you know, I think Sports tourism is an excellent opportunity. Um, I think we know there've been a, some, there's some interest in expanding uh, our capacity to host sport tourism. And so this might well be uh, something that we, we want to support as a community. Um, but I, have a, I really have a, a, a problem with giving another 45 grand to a consultant to tell us how to expand the BMC or what else we might be doing on this front. Um, I, I think that there are some legitimate issues around uh, why have we not been successful with some other bids, uh, having put a lot of time and energy into those bids, improving them might be very much uh, very worthwhile, but I haven't even seen the scope of work for this. Um, and given we uh, cut far less that had far more benefit uh, out of the budget just last week, I'm not gonna support adding that uh, spending uh, today. 
So I'll call the question. Uh, those in favor of the direct motion, please indicate. One, two, three, four, five, six opposed. One, two, three, four, and myself, that carries six to five. Okay, thank you, members of council. That uh, I believe completes the direct motions. I don't see any others. Uh, and we can now move to the presentation from the YMCA. Uh, just bear with me a, mo a moment here. We can get uh, the presenters into the meeting in the meantime. Okay. Uh, have we got Kristen with us? Yes, there she is. Okay, so uh, tonight's presentation, of course, is um, regarding the new YMCA in Barrie, building the center of uh, building a center of community in our downtown. Uh, I believe with us tonight are both Jill Tetman, CEO, and there she is, of the uh, YMCA of Simcoe Muskoka. We have Lynn Strawn, board chair, and as well Brian Tamblin. Uh, campaign capital campaign co-chair of the YMCA Simcoe Muskoka uh, to provide the presentation. I think Kristen's online as well for questions and to uh, give us the PowerPoint. So thank you all for being here tonight and I will turn it over to you at the Y to make this exciting presentation. Go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Perfect. Over to you, Lynn. Thank you, Jill. Um, good evening, Mayor Lehman, Deputy Mayor Ward, members of council, staff, and the public. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to you this evening about the YMCA and our exciting plans for a new downtown Barry Y. As you mentioned, Mayor Lehman, my name is Lynn Strawn. I'm the chair of the YMCA Simcoe Muskoka Board of Directors. And I'm joined by Brian Tamlin, who is the co-chair of the 100 Reasons Why campaign, Jill Tetman, our president and CEO, and Christian Schreiner from Martin Simmons Architects. Before we get into our presentation, I'd like to begin by thanking everyone here this evening for opening the door to us to explore the possibility of a YMCA on the property adjacent to the downtown library branch. You've already shown your support by making this property available to us. Thank you. As you can see by the image on the slide, we have been working hard to envision a new Barry Y at this location. The YMCA of Simcoe Muskoka is committed to building a new kind of Y to serve the people in Barry, which Jill and Brian will talk to in more detail throughout the presentation. With our partners, including Youth Haven, RVH and others, we are building a community hub in the heart of our downtown where everyone can belong and everyone can thrive. Barry's population is expected to exceed 200,000 by the year 2030. And I certainly don't have to tell this group about all of the growth that's happening in the downtown core. This is the why we need for the community that we want. And just for some background for you about the YMCA, the, the Y is one of the longest standing charities serving Barrie and the surrounding areas. And we are the largest provider of human services across Simcoe, Muskoka and Perry Sound. And one of Simcoe County's largest employers with over a thousand employees and specifically one of the largest employers of youth in the region, providing hundreds of teens and young adults with their first job. We provide a wide range of services to support our community, including camps, outdoor education and leadership development opportunities, employment supports and services, health, fitness and aquatics programming, licensed childcare and before and after school care, immigrant services and supports for youth at risk. All of our programs are accessible regardless of ability to pay, age, race, physical ability, or background. At the Y, we turn no one away and in fact provide financial assistance to one in 10 participants who are able, who are unable to pay for these programs. Research has shown that being engaged with YMC programs and services not only increases general health, but also mental health and life satisfaction. As we come out of the pandemic, hopefully soon, 
uh, this holistic approach to wellness and connectivity will be even more important. We need to bring people together in a place that is inclusive and safe. In this way, the Y is very much in the business of upstream health measures that support both the Barry Health Accord and the city's community safety and well-being plan. The programs and partnerships within the new Barry Y are designed to address some of the most critical issues facing our community. Barry's urban growth node currently has no licensed child care spaces within it. According to our health unit, adults in our community suffer from higher than provincial average rates of cancer and heart disease. Youth in Central County experience lower levels of mental health than their peers across the province, and youth make up a disproportionate percentage of our homeless population. Finally, Central County residents report having a lower sense of belonging than others across the, uh, the province. An action is needed to reverse these trends in Barry. For several years now, Y staff and volunteers have been working together to build a new downtown Y. Because we believe that this is the area where the Y can have the greatest impact on our community. Building it in this location will allow us to expand the reach of our own program as a Y, strengthen the impact of our partners and support the city's vision for a downtown that is safe, vibrant, and welcoming for all. This new facility will be home to traditional Y programs, uh, such as health, fitness, and aquatics, licensed child care, day camp, and programs for youth and adults. Um, and adults include families. In addition, this building will provide space for the Y to offer new programs to support our community, often with programming partners. And I think this is one of the most exciting things about uh, this. The Y is committed to offering these programs where they are most needed and very, that means building downtown. Partnerships uh, are the key to this project. Uh, we'll have permanent space on site for RV liver, cardiac, and uh, cancer rehabilitation services, and for youth haven to provide transitional housing for youth. And that uh, currently doesn't formally exist in Kingston County. Y already has begun meeting with the public library to look for program synergy work together. Uh, we're going to build uh, a pond partnership with the McLaren Arts Center, Tax world, and there's a host of opportunities to develop new partnerships with the Georgian College uh, and the city of Barrie. Um, finally, as, as Barrie continues uh, to grow and diversify, uh, there's an increasing need for public spaces for different communities to meet and celebrate their heritage. The wise public meeting spaces within this facility. Uh, could be ideal for this. And uh, the Y is very open to meeting with Ethnic Mosaic Alliance if this facility to meet their needs or at least complement their needs uh, for a cultural community. We know, bottom line is, I guess, we know that non for profit organizations are stronger when they work together to maximize their impact. And this new Y will be a catalyst. Uh, for this kind of collaboration in Barry. Finally, we believe that building on this site adjacent to the library supports the city's vision for our downtown core. The new Y will create both short term employment opportunities for construction teams, as well as long term permanent part time and full time jobs. The Y will bring increased foot traffic into the core to support. Small, small business. The Y will, uh, well, sorry, with intensification uh, increasing in the downtown core, it's going to be important to provide amenities to support this development, such as licensed child care, public eating spaces, health and wellness options, 
uh, everything of this project is going to be. All of these elements contribute to creating a safe, vibrant, and welcoming downtown. As you can see from the slide, this is a bit of a, a roadmap of what we are envisioning. We're excited to report that after having completed a site fitting exercise on H Block, the new Y facility uh, would include a three classroom licensed childcare center, transitional housing for youth operated in partnership with Youth Haven, permanent space for cardiac and cancer rehabilitation programs delivered in partnership with RVH, a health and wellness center, including a gym, conditioning space, an indoor track and studios, public meeting rooms, an indoor playground, a youth center that can be utilized by both the Y and other youth serving organizations, as well as seniors, two swimming pools, a combination of surface and below ground parking. More than all of this, the new Y will be ground zero for thousands more Y stories. We will create opportunities for people to come together and connect in a place that inspires wellness, connection, and fun. The faces of the individuals in this presentation are not stock photos. They're images of members of our community who have been impacted by the Y. Nathan was born premature and his parents credit his development in many ways to YMCA childcare programs. Mo and Mildred were both new Canadians who credit YMCA immigrant services with helping them settle into our community. And Katerina was a youth facing unemployment and mental health barriers who credits the WISE employment supports with helping her find a meaningful career. The projected cost of this important investment into community infrastructure is estimated at $50 million. We have received significant commitment of over 20 mil 29 million from the provincial government, along with 2.5 million from the County of Simcoe as well as incredible community support through our 100 Reasons Why campaign. We have also sold our Grove Street properties to support this project. We are asking the City of Barrie to consider making a $2.5 million gift, matching the County of Simcoe's contribution so that we can proceed with this significant social development initiative. As we said earlier, this is the why that we need for the Barrie we want. We believe the new YMCA supports Council's vision for the city, for downtown, and will meet the needs of our community as we continue to grow. I'd like to thank you for your support, for your consideration of our request, and for your time this evening. We would be happy to answer any questions that you have at this time. Thank you again. Thank you very much, Jill, Brian, and Lynn for the presentation, giving us a uh a glimpse into the future for this. I will just ask the clerk to go back to the uh, full grid screen so that I can see council and ask if there are any questions for the presenters. Councillor Kungle. Thank you, Mary Lehman. Uh, through you um, to the YMCA team. So lovely to see you and thank you for the presentation. I'll let you redirect, but I guess I'll, um, I'll seem to redirect it to, um, this one's a bit financial in nature. So perhaps, um, Ms. Strana, as you spoke to that slide, I'll start with you and let you um, pull in the rest of the team as you like. And uh, when I'm looking at that $5.6 million gap and your reference to asking the city for 2.5 million, um, I'm assuming that your gap with that assumption um, would be about $5.1 million. Can you uh, speak at all to strategies or plans um, around um, addressing the remaining potential gap of $5 million? You know, I'm noting in, in the slide presentation, the relationship to RVH from the cardiac and cancer programming. Uh, they have a strong, um, well, as you, um, you know, I think we all know they have a strong foundation and strong um, um, capacity to generate um, donations. And I was wondering if you could speak to um, what kind of risk that poses or what kind of strategies you have in place to address that minimum $5 million. Strong. So, thank you for the question, Councillor Kungle, and um, through you, Mary Lehman, to the Councillor. Uh, we have with us today our esteemed co chair of the 100 Reasons Why campaign, Mr. Ryan Tamblin, and he works very closely with Ms. Anna Cheney 
and they have done a fantastic job so far in raising funds from the community. We do have a plan to continue to raise funds from the community. And we also um, have an opportunity to borrow some funds if needed. So that's a short answer to your question. I'm not sure if Brian has something that he'd like to add from his vantage point as um, co-chair of the fundraising committee. Yeah, I, I would just say that um, I don't think we've had anybody say no to us yet. Um, and there are quite a few donors who uh, of course, wanted wanted to make sure that we got government funding and that the project uh, was a go. Um, with COVID and that, we really kind of just stopped. Um, and we, of course, this is a new site as well. So we had to redesign the building. Um, all that is just coming together. You're seeing uh, some of the first images uh, that anybody's seen of this new building. So um, I think we're very optimistic that you know, the five or six million um, that is left, uh, we're quite confident that uh, we'll be able to achieve that. Further Hi, questions? Councilor Kungle. Yep. Thank you. Um, through you um, to the presenters, thank you for that response. And my next question is about capacity. Can you share anything in more detail about how the new um, Y in downtown Barry? is forecasted to either um, meet your past capacity um, around the facility on Grove Street and or add to that. And is there anything um, we should appreciate around um, if there's a greater capacity, you know, will you have greater opportunities for membership revenue or meeting increased demand? Uh, had you been waitlisting and would this new building actually facilitate meeting any type of unmet need? Ms. Tubman or? Why don't I go to you? Uh, sure. Who? Uh, I'll let them direct, probably from an operational standpoint. Yeah. Uh, then I'll go to Ms. Tetman. Thank you for that um, that question, Councillor Kungle. Um, so, yes, we are anticipating similar uh, membership to the former Barry Y on Grove Street. We actually have a market research study in the field right now that is doing some research in the Barry area in the community that we're going to be building in. And that is going to give us some more information and some better understanding of what our membership numbers could look like. Uh, we are certainly anticipating that um, we will have a child care center with uh, 41 spaces that will be full because it is the only one in the in that area and uh, we are anticipating that our other programs and services uh, will be quite uh, full as well so we're waiting to see our research uh, from the market study and as I said we are looking at numbers similar to where we were at with the uh, former Barry Wine Grove Street. Great thank you Ms. Tetman. I have no further questions. Thanks, Councillor Kungle. Uh, I did see several other hands. I'm sorry, though, you'll have to put them up again. Councillor Harvey, go ahead, and then Councillor Ripa. Thank you, Mayor Lehman. Uh, yeah, just a couple of just quick questions. Uh, first of all, just curious, I know it said three classrooms for daycare, but how many daycare spots would this uh, new building accommodate? Yes, thank you for your question, Councillor Harvey. So that it's, it's actually three classrooms. It'll be a, an infant classroom, toddler classroom, and preschool classroom, and it will be 41 spaces for children. Okay, great. And then my other question is around the pools. Um, you spoke about two different pools. Uh, just curious what size of pools we're uh, talking about and whether or not one of them would, uh, by chance, happen to be Olympic sizes. That seems to be the... Uh, <laughs> The, the, the real uh, multi-million dollar question that always comes from the aquatic uh, world uh, here in Barrie, because we don't have one. Thank you for that uh, question, Councillor Harvey. Um, I am a mom of uh, two competitive swimmers, so I would have said 10 years ago that, uh, yes, absolutely, we need a 50, million, a 50 meter pool. So the pool that we are speaking about in this location is a 25 meter pool and four lanes. And the second uh, pool that we speak of is more of a uh, therapeutic pool. So it'll be a pool for um, children and, and smaller children with swimming lessons and certainly more from a therapeutic perspective. So similar to some of the other pools, if you're familiar with the Innisfil YMCA set up with a lane pool and then a smaller pool, um, we do believe that uh, 
the the site itself would not uh, fit a 50 meter pool. Um, it's also um, operationally not sustainable for us to to operate a 50 meter pool, unfortunately. Yeah, great. Thank you. That seems to be uh, the, the big piece is the operational piece of it because you're dealing with double the water capacity and the maintenance is obviously double or more. Thanks a lot. Thanks, uh, Councillor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And um, yeah, it's a terrific project and I think it's uh, in a great spot and I think it uh, will help our downtown and certainly it matches up very nicely with uh, the library next door to it as well. Um, I guess my question is, uh, I'm assuming and uh, that your building design is, is uh, so very preliminary at this point. Um, and I see some nods. And I, I guess my, my thought is this, um, when I look at the picture, um, I'm just concerned about how it addresses the two streets, uh, Clapperton and uh, Wolseley. Um, it, it looks like it's a like there's not much going on um, to address the street and to make it sort of street friendly and inviting people in and that kind of thing. Um, it and I, I may be looking at the um, at it uh, at a very early stage yet, uh, but it seems like it's a it's a it's a pretty long wall um, without much um, activity going there. Um, am I right in that, or is it, any comments on that? Um, because I'd really like to make sure that this building is A, uh, very functional, and B, uh, really sort of draws the city into it, because I think that's really what we're trying to accomplish with the Y in any event. Any, any thoughts on that? Ms. Tapman, and then maybe Ms. Tron, I know you've been working on that too. Go ahead, Ms. Tapman. Thank you, uh, Councillor Rikma. I, I wonder if this might be an opportunity to uh, ask our architect to maybe share some of the other uh, designs that face the uh, other streets because it's an, an unique uh, building in that it's it's more of a U-shaped building with a, a center that you can't see the other sides of it right now, right? So um, maybe that would be an opportunity if, if Kristen would be interested in, in speaking to that and, and maybe showing what that might look like on the other streets. Sure, I can do that, absolutely. Am I allowed to share my screen with you? Yeah, okay. Uh, yes, so our, yep, there we go. Yes, so these are the images you've seen um, from Worsley Street. And yes, you're correct that we have kind of just begun our design. We have spent a fair bit of time making sure that the programs that the Y needs can fit on the site and can lay out in a way that's functional and befitting of the site. Um, one thing that we are really trying to focus on with this design is the relationship to the park and kind of connecting to the existing library through that landscape design. Um, so along Worsley Street, we envision the pool here really being a point of activation for the street. So glimpses into the pool area, as well as kind of integrated signage, and then really pulling back the entry to create um, a nice covered entrance that's extending and gesturing towards Worsley Street. Um, and the other feature that we're really excited about is this kind of idea of a kind of threshold or indoor outdoor space that is kind of adjoining the Y with the park, um, which you can see here along this extended canopy. So on the other side, which would be um, off McDonald Street, we would have a second entry here for drop off and vehicular access. And this bar here, um, this is actually just canopy. So it's a green roof, it's a covered area for drop off for the childcare, um, people waiting for rides, for example, from the Y. So the actual building footprint um, exists here. So that entry is also, I think, quite engaging, quite um, dramatic, reaching out towards McDonald Street and providing a kind of entry point to the park 
as well from the parking side. Um, so I can pull up my model here. Um, are you able to see the 3D on my screen? Yeah, that's great. Okay, great. So here's kind of what I was talking about with the pool, which will be along Worsley Street. Um, and, you know, I might just actually turn off the trees because I think it might help us navigate a little quicker. Um, but here you can see what I was speaking to about that kind of idea of there being a threshold space between the park and the Y. And here is where we would have the youth center, which has its own entrance for after hours, as well as the child care facility with outdoor play being kind of semi-sheltered and semi-exposed to the park, possibly sunken slightly. And then I'll just whip around and I'll show you the vehicle drop-off side I was starting to describe. You can see we don't have a lot of detail on this side yet in the design, but this would be the, the parking lot side entry for the Y and then the childcare entry would be here. And then the idea would be that, especially in the winter months, you would have also a physical connection between the Y and the childcare. So the children can actually make use of the gym facility, for example, which is right here. Um, so I don't know if I've answered your question completely, but I will say that I think this site has a tremendous amount of opportunity for the architecture and the landscape to really work with what is existing on the site currently. And I think it's a really great fit for the program um, that the Y has. And as far as addressing the street and animating the street with the Worsley Street facades and the other facades, I will say that, you know, that work has kind of just begun. So, um, you know, we will be looking in a lot more detail at each of those elevations, how the glazing will address the street, what kinds of materials and uh, gestures we can do to really activate the street and the building from all sides. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Ripa. Yes, I, I think that was very helpful and it, it really is quite amazing what you can do with, uh, with your uh, CAD and that kind of thing with your drawings. Um, I guess I would just encourage you to um, think about someone that's walking uh, along Clapperton and uh, along Worsley and just how that building feels to feels to that person um, and um, yeah I, I mean I think you you've got a great design going here I, I'm just concerned about um, how it feels from from the sidewalk um, so if you could I'm sure that you'll be able to address that in due course thank you thanks thanks for your question Thanks, Councillor Reba. Uh, others who have questions. Uh, next, I have Councillor Morales and then Councillor Iowa. Thank you, uh, Mayor Lehman, and thank you for all those questions. I'm going to, I think I'm going to, I was inspired by Councillor Reba's question and, and taking it to the next level because um, I, again, I, I also appreciated seeing some of those architectural renderings, Ms. Uh, Ms. Schneider. Um, in terms of the building itself, so this is very valuable downtown land, like good location, right? We envision, we build not for yesterday's Barry, but what's coming tomorrow. Um, is there an opportunity or has it even already been considered about future proofing the built form of that building? And what I mean by that is I don't, I'm not an architect, but designing it in a way that it allows the YMCA to in the future consider adding density above either the main building or I see that, you know, there's a couple blocks that you have there, maybe not the big one, but the little one to the north, where in 15 years, the YMCA goes, wow, this is such a great place to be. And the land is so valuable that essentially just stack on some density, whether it be um, market housing, whether it be a community housing, whatever it may be, allows you the opportunity because and the, the, where this comes from, and I'll just quickly give some clarity, is the Barry Library right now sits on valuable land. 
But since it was designed in the early uh, 90s, I don't believe there's an opportunity to just stack on density, just they didn't have the proper load bearing things. Is this something that's in the consideration uh, for you guys to do this? So you, the YMCA, not the city, has the ability to future proof it, if you will? Thank you, Councillor Morales, for that question. I will turn to, to uh, Kristen to answer that question. Sure, yes, thank you. I think um, we have had discussions about that exact idea, um, possibly going out um, in case we need more density in the future. And there are definitely ways that we can design the structure with that in mind. Um, we would definitely be using some steel in this project already, but um, that's something that we would get into as we are engaging our structural consultants so much further down the road. But I would say that the, the roof lines of the building that we're working with are quite friendly to that as a concept. And I would also say that we have um, the hopes of having that parcel D as well as C, which gives us a little bit more room as well to grow if we were to need. And as you may have seen on the McDonald's side, we have that kind of extended canopy right now that is offering a kind of covered drop-off and some outdoor program area, but that could potentially be built area as well in the future. Correct, thank you. Um, and yeah, it's as you said, it's not so much for the now, it's future-proofing it for the later, right? I look at the Grove building, I believe from the 60s, 70s, I have the decade wrong, no point in going back 40 years and saying what could have been done. Um, but, you know, if we have the opportunity, and again, maybe you guys come back and say, Sergio, it's an extra $5 million, it'd be prohibitive, it's not going to work great, at least we have an answer. Um, but if it could be worked out, you know, we would hate to be in a situation, whoever's in these roles in 20, 30 years going, wow, downtown Barrie is the hot place to be, there's density, the land is so valuable, but we have to tear down this building that is not at the end of life cycle, or we have no choice. So it's one of those preventive measures, you understood what I meant, so I appreciate that. I've got a couple more follow-ups. Um, so uh, I love the breakdown. Um, and I believe, Ms. Tevin, I believe you might've been the one talking this, the slide where you said, this is the youth center, kind of like you had a bit of a floor plan. Here's this, here's that, here's the RBH component. And there was a line I wrote down while you were talking. You said, um, where is it? Uh, uh, um, I wrote it down. <laughs> um, uh, basically we're communities, um, come together, um, co oh, connecting at a place that inspires. And then you continued on, that really kind of stuck with me. So I love the possible integration of the community partners you identified, uh, including uh, possibly the RBH, uh, Shacks World, Barry Native Friendship Center and others, um, because actually, and I wanna give kudos to one of your staffers, uh, VP Brian Shelley, he reached out to me last week, very productive conversation. And this has actually been sitting on kind of like my, my thinking board, uh, where I always saw, you know, we need to have that community hub and it's everyone's been talking about this for forever, about where community places right now that they rent out a gym here, a hall there, they kind of have a facility of their own in a sustainable, fiscally sustainable way where nobody's building a culture center, if you will, on their own. Um, so I really like kind of that vision you're going for, um, but looking at your footprint, is there an opportunity if this part of the discussion really takes off, Ms. Uh, Ms. Tetman? to maybe add or repurpose or expand a section that could be deemed a cultural center. Um, I know that has been brought by various individuals to the city's attention in the past. So I'm wondering if this can be like really capitalized on inefficiencies of scale and further your vision of, of, of community coming together. Ms. Chapman. Yes, thank you for that question, Councilor Morales. I think there's a, a huge amount of potential in this in this space, and uh, we're very open to speaking to all community groups, particularly uh, with the um, Mosaic Alliance, and and understanding what the opportunities are there. I've had some conversations already with them and understanding what they are thinking they want to do in the city with the cultural center. Um, our space, our spaces, as, as Kristen just, um, provided, are open to expansion. They're open to moving a little bit out into some of the green space. We can uh, change some of the square footage pieces around a little bit. Uh, nothing is really set in stone right now. We have made sure that all of our programs and services that we have envisioned for this new Y fit in this new space. 
And we are very open to having conversations with anybody who wants to partner with us. Um, we really do believe that this new why is, is going to be all about partnerships. And, and, and that's incredible. Again, if, uh, you know, if in between now and when the decisions are made, if, you know, if, if people such as, and not limited to, uh, the Barry Indian Association, the Barry Latino uh, Association, the Filipino Association, there's so many groups, again, that they all would love some sort of building and center, but to, eight, to heat it, to ensure it, to build it, it, it's not happening. But again, the efficiencies of scale, and maybe that just means adding 10,000 to what you already have and making sure that everybody can coexist with the scheduling, um, I think would be, an, and, and now they're exposed to services they like may not have even heard about. And, you know, you get that synergy. Um, so that's obviously very valuable. And just personally speaking for myself, not for council, would, would, would really, I would be getting, would be perceiving more value with such a money ask. And then finally, here's another one. And I've heard this informally. This is very anecdotally, and I've heard it informally throughout the years from people. Everybody loves the YMCA, right? The brand is ubiquitous with community. Um, we love what you've done in the community so far. Um, again, the new urbanism principles that you've showed in what you have so far, great pushing the buildings up to the road. So that's great. From a downtown perspective, more, more eyes on the street with that synergy of the library next door, again, home run. But something that has been said, and it's, it's not critical, but that has been reflected to me anecdotally is the fees. So if somebody wants to choose the YMCA over um, compatible rec space at the city or even LA Fitness or another one of those gyms anywhere in between the spectrum of, of service offering, that the YMCA fee isn't um, that competitive. Again, anecdotally and not formally. So as a result, usually it would, really wouldn't be my business to comment on the operational model and external organization, but here we are in this conversation because there's possibly a money ask from city coffers. So as a result, is there an opportunity, um, I don't know who this question would go to, maybe the board, maybe yourself, to if the city did agree to cover uh, you know, the, the, the cost and likely ask, that some of those concerns about the competitiveness of the fee be addressed. And it, it, it might not be for the general public, but possibly for dis disenfranchised peoples and youth, uh, vulnerable populations, or something else where a fee structure um, can be addressed uh, or assured uh, in the situation where the YMCA is taking um, municipal property taxpayer dollars. So I'll, I'll let Ms. Strawn answer. I'm sure both Ms. Strawn and Ms. Tepman will want to respond to that. But of course, that is one of the strengths of the Y is that uh, they don't refuse people. They actually support just exactly those groups you just talked about because they don't have a fee structure uh, that is uh, fixed in that way. Uh, Ms. Strawn, did you want to describe some of that? Or, yeah. Or Ms. Tepman? Uh, thank you, Mayor Lehman. You're exactly right. The YMCA is open to all people, regardless of their financial situation. We support people at various income levels based on what they can afford to pay. There's people who participate at YMCA and YMCA programs that pay nothing. There's people that might pay $5 or $10. Um, we'd never turn anyone away. And one of the great parts about being a member of the Y is that if you are paying a full membership price to be part of the YMCA, through the, your membership dollars, you're actually supporting um, others in participating in programs. And many of those people are children and youth and families, people participating in swimming lessons, uh, youth basketball, young leaders programs. So we're really proud of that work and um, how we're able to respond to community need. It's one of the reasons why I love the YMCA, um, but I'll turn it over to Ms. Tetman. She, she might just have some more statistics to back that up. I, I just kind of have a passion piece around it. <laughs> Ms. Tetman. Thank you. I actually see that Brian Tamblin has his hand up. So maybe I'd let him speak first. Okay. Well, I, I was probably going to say what you were going to say, just that um, on average with the um, uh, fitness and aquatics programs in particular, about 25% of the membership is subsidized and some of them pay nothing. And a lot of, a lot of families uh, are in that program in particular. So that's the figure across all our, we're a regional Y. So we run a number of Ys and I think 25%, I believe Jill is about the correct figure. Perfect, thank you. And I, again, I appreciate that answer. I just educated myself. And even while we were talking, got, I got information that um, you know, it needs to be acknowledged since I brought up the question, I just won't leave the loose end. You guys are competing with multinational franchise corporations in the gym industry, and you're competing against a municipality 
that subset has a zero in program. So vis-a-vis, -vis, not identical. So I'll say that since the, again, I'm being educated, I'm getting this feedback as well. And, and Mr. Tamblin, you saying that statistic is a number that is incredible, uh, that is worth noting. And obviously in the future campaign, again, anecdotally, when people have those comments, I personally now know the answer and can point them in a better direction, but great to hear that you guys are doing this. Um, again, um, again, a, a place where community comes together. You know, we have the sandbox for our entrepreneurs and small businesses. Uh, this future YMCA site might be that kind of place uh, but for community and the fitness and, and culture initiatives and, and, and other supports. So thank you for your presentation. Thank you again for, again, kudos again to Mr. Shelley for reaching out nice and early. So I had pre-written questions and, 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 and uh, coming from a, a supportive uh, perspective and I look forward to see where the discussion goes. Other members of council with questions on the presentation. Councillor Jim Harris and then Councillor Aylwin. Great, thank you, Mayor Lehman, and thank you to the uh, Y representatives here tonight. Um, one of the items, uh, the features of this uh, project that interests me a great deal is the partnership with Youth Haven and the Youth Traditional Housing. Um, so disappointed that it wasn't spoken in more detail in the presentation, very cursory in the um, design discussion. I wonder if you, if you, I don't know who the question would be to, maybe it's to Ms. Tetman. If you give me a bit more detail about the size of that program, those of us in Barrie who understand the work that Youth Haven have done, uh, recognize that they've done a lot with very little for a long time. And we've seen other communities who started much later in the business of youth traditional housing pass us, Collingwood, for example, um, with the Weeder residents. So I'm wondering um, if you give us a bit more detail about the number of units and a bit more detail about the operation of the youth traditional housing that's associated with this project. Thank you for that question, Councillor Jim Harris. I uh, would be very happy to speak about our Youth Haven partnership. We are still in sort of some design phases and we have been speaking with Youth Haven about their specific design, but what we are imagining right now is a two-story building. Um, it would have 14 units. Each would be a separate unit, like a dorm style room. So each youth would have their own room to themselves, which would have, um, uh, some facilities in you know, like a, a toilet and a sink, but not shower and shower would be uh, there'd be shower uh, built stalls sort of built in every second or every third sort of room in the house could be a communal kitchen and there'd be communal lounge spaces. Um, the part of the transitional housing is that the requirement to be in a transitional housing uh, unit for youth is that you are either uh, employed or are in school full time but you do not have housing or cannot afford housing and you need some extra assistance in some of the social skills to support you in, in getting out and, and finding housing on your own and, and living on your own. So it really is a, it's a step up obviously from, a, from an emergency shelter perspective, but it does give those youth that are seeking uh, somewhere to live that are really on their way, but just need a little bit of extra help and support. And they can be in the, the uh, supportive housing unit for up to four years minus a day is my understanding. Okay, thank you. And will it replace or augment Youth Haven current uh, programming and home? So it will replace Morton House, which is currently the where the transitional housing is. Uh, they will still continue to have the emergency youth shelter. Okay, great. So they will have the, got, gotcha. Um, that's wonderful. Thank you. Um, curious, why 14? Is that just a number based on need or size or how, how did you get to 14? That's a great question. <laughs> Uh, I will look to either okay, a question for Ms. Schreiner. Maybe, or um, uh, I don't I have the I background. Can, sorry, I can help to Ms. answer. Strong, go ahead. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So the number of, of between 14 and 16 was what we've been planning on um, since we started talking about the partnership. And really, that's based on the ability to sustainably operate the facility. So um, it will be, as we said, in partnership with. 
Youth Haven and also an ongoing partnership with the County of Simcoe as the main funder for transitional housing operationally, obviously with the support of the City of Barrie. And um, that's where we developed that number. And I just wanted to add one other thing about this partnership, which I think is really great. And that is the YMCA uh, and our programs in youth leadership and youth employment, which will directly benefit the young people who are uh, using the transitional housing, as well as the partnerships we have with the school board offering uh, unique ways to gain high school credits in conjunction with them. And we are also the largest youth employer in Simcoe County. And so that's a great opportunity for those young people to get part-time work while they're um, staying at the transitional housing. Great, thanks. Yeah, it, yeah. The, the answer is just gonna reinform that part of the project being very interesting to me and I think a, an important addition to the community. Um, just wondering with that noted in the, um, the slide that has the breakdown of the current financial commitments, is any of that um, related to funds that uh, go towards providing housing so that those um, units that will be traditional housing is a 20 point not uh, any of those dollars uh, related to that or is there still funding opportunities that could be added um, that uh, connect to um, funding for ho housing homelessness and those kind of things maybe that's for Ms. Tepin I think sure Ms. Tepin Thank you for that question, Councillor Jim Harris. We are um, continuing to explore other partnership um, opportunities. There, there may be uh, further funding opportunities for housing for sure, and uh, we are continuing to explore that. Um, as Lynn had commented, the, this, the County of Simcoe has provided in their contribution for support to the transitional housing, as well as the childcare. But we do believe that uh, we will continue to look and, and potentially with uh, if we can get an agreement signed with between the federal and provincial government around child care, that there may be some additional funding for child care as well. OK, great. Thank you. That maybe leads to my final question. It looks like if my math is correct, you're at about um, currently about 85 percent of the funding is is uh, uh, in hand. And with the city, that would bump you to if the 2.5 was granted would be 90%. Is the goal to be 100%? Is that, I mean, I, maybe that's an obvious question, but um, you know, knowing that you've got some potential other opportunities for funding, whether it be the housing piece, the, the um, daycare piece, um, you know, and I guess there's some fundraising happening, obviously with the, the um, 100 Reasons of Why campaign. Um, is that the goal is to get to 100? And if you didn't, what would be the, what, what is your kind of uh, ideal place to end? I will actually ask our co-chair for our capital campaign to answer that question. Mr. Tamper. Yeah, it, yeah, the numbers are a little complicated. It's not quite 2.5 doesn't quite drop off the total, but I think we'll be down to, yeah, we'll be around uh, about 6 million or so we need to raise. And, um, you know, I, I mentioned that we hadn't been turned down by anybody, but we hadn't even gone public. Uh, we, we've raised this just in the quiet phase. And there's lots of people we haven't talked to even in the quiet phase. So I think we're, we're very confident we can do it. But, um, if, you know, and the building, you know, how building costs have gone up too, right? So we're saying 50 million, who knows, could be 55 million. Uh, we're going to have to, find that and uh, as uh, I think Lynn said, if we had to, the Y would have to look at uh, borrowing and trying to find other government uh, sources of money. But we're, we're pretty optimistic the way it sits now that we'll be able to fundraise to 100%. Wonderful, thank you. Maybe one final question. I, I was surprised the scale would be similar as far as memberships and uh, such to the a previous Y, which I was a member, <laughs> both junior member way back in the day and, uh, and adult member uh, uh, a little bit later. Um, just curious as far as the employment, are we basically then looking at a similar employment number uh, in the new um, uh, plan versus the uh, previous plan? Yes, thank you. 
Thank you for that question, Councillor Jim Harris. We are looking at about 100 uh, staff between full-time and part-time staff that would work. We're open 365, 364 days uh, uh, a year or so we are looking to similar numbers we hope that the numbers and the membership will be greater than where we were at grove street uh, but we also are looking at uh, behavior and what's happening uh, through the pandemic and where people will end up after the pandemic and how they'll want to re react again and come out to um, out to facilities again so we are being optimistic i believe in actually looking at the numbers from the uh, former grove street site as a, as a starting point for our membership Great. Thank you to the members for answering my questions. I greatly appreciate uh, your time and consideration. Thank you. That's all. Mr. Mary Camlin, did you have some to add on that? Yeah, yeah just on just on point. I think uh, the, the uh, Barry Wise had a long history here, and it and you've been there a, a long time, Councillor Harris, or you were, and uh, you know it was it was around six thousand members, and this one's built for between six to seven thousand. I think the Innisfil Y right now, Jill, is at about 7,000 members. So, and, and we see, we talk about the downtown, um, but of course, I think it will also serve the East End of Barrie quite well. And there's no rec center in the East End of Barrie. So we're expecting a pr pretty good portion of the membership to come from the East End as well. Okay, thank you. I take no offense to the long time comment. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm in the same boat. The same I got boat. that. <laughs> thank you. What is that 1953 membership card look like? <laughs> uh, Councillor uh, Aylwin, well, you said junior member. Uh, Councillor Aylwin and then Councillor McCann. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Mary Lehman. Yeah, and uh, on the other side of things, I, I was doing swimming lessons there just a couple of years ago. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you so much for the presentation. Um, you know, as a downtown resident and the downtown councillor, I'm really excited to welcome the YMCA to this strategic uh, site. I think there's a lot of really great opportunities. And uh, as a member of the Barry Public Library Board, I'm really pumped about the cross-programming opportunities that are available to us. Um, and just a little note too, we were talking about uh, the Worsley Street entrance to the Y and uh, you know that interaction with the streetscape. Um, in the Barry Public Library's uh, Master Facilities Plan, there was actually a proposal to have uh, the entrance on that southwest corner of the library be open to the public. Um, but that's something that's never uh, come to fruition. So I see a great opportunity there to open up uh, that side of the library and have those buildings facing each other and make easy access for people attending the Y and the library. Uh, no questions for now. I just wanted to say thank you so much for the work that you do uh, and uh, that I'm excited. Thanks. Thanks, Councillor Owen. Councillor McKay. Uh, thank you, Mayor Lehman. And uh, I guess what keeps on popping off my head is, wow, a picture really does say a thousand words. And I never really was getting overly excited about this project until I saw the renderings and especially the 3D renderings, um, you know, connected a lot of dots for me. And uh, quite frankly, got me pretty excited about this project. Uh, but I do have some questions uh, for you and maybe, maybe I'll just um, get some clarification. You're presenting right now, obviously, and you're, you're asking for $2.5 million. Uh, and then the staff's gonna have a report back in January but this is the, this is the, really the only time that we're going to be able to interact about design. Is that correct? Uh, I'll, I'll put that through to uh, Ms. Tapman, but no, I'm sure there's going to be more opportunities. Uh, Ms. Tapman. Yes, thank you for your question, uh, Councillor McKen. There will be lots more opportunities. We are very early in our design stages, and we anticipate that as we move into the new year, we'll have lots of opportunity for broader engagement on the design and the programs and services and, and what we can do on the site. So I'm really excited about the synergies and opportunities with all of the different partners in the downtown core, particularly beside the library. So we do know that we have more opportunities for engagement, bro much broader engagement. Well, just I appreciate that. And just talking about design, like what a stunning design this is. You know, it's uh, it really is a special piece. And uh, congratulations to your design team, your architects uh, who put this forward. I hope uh, what we get is something, you know, very close to this, this look. 
Um, but I did, did maybe want to address the parking spots. It looks like that we're losing about 44 parking spots. But I think instead of going into detail tonight, because it's preliminary, we'll wait until staff and you have that conversation offline um, and, and see what we're going to do with that. Um, the other question I had was, you know, when we first uh, were in negotiations or talking about having the YDH block and being so close to the Barry Public Library, I had really thought that there would have been a piece that would have connected, integrated, had a covered um, building connecting the library and the, uh, the YMCA. Um, I do understand this is your preliminary design. Is that something that's been talked about? Is that something that's been seriously taking into consideration? Because obviously you'd have to, you know, partner up with the city of Barrie. Thank you for that question, Councillor McCann. I will actually ask Kristen to uh, speak to that because we have had that conversation. Yes, thank you, Councillor McCann, for your question. Yeah, we have had some discussions about connecting physically to the library, um, but in the end, for the scheme that we've presented to you tonight, we were kind of favoring that um, connection we would get through the landscape, through the park. So the maintenance of that linear park from Worsley Street back through McDonald Street was really important to the scheme. I also felt that connecting physically to the library could actually kind of block that sense of a park and create a bit of a barrier from a pedestrian standpoint. Um, so that was kind of what was driving this design. And then the other reason is we wanted to keep that childcare feeling really open to the landscape and the kind of outdoor play area that's associated with it as well. Um, feeling really bright and open and um, kind of one with the, the larger park. Um, but that is not to say that we wouldn't consider a physical connection if, you know, as we look further into the design and certainly if the footprint were needing to expand and move closer to the library, I think that is something that we could definitely consider. Okay, I appreciate that. And sorry, you know, maybe it's my ignorance here, but are you the designer? Are you the, the architect or? Yes, sorry, okay. I'm uh, I'm with Martin Simmons Architects. Okay, yes. oh, yeah, well, lovely design. Um, yeah, you. you know I mean? Uh, sorry, thank you. Uh, when, uh, just so you're clear on what my, my thought pattern is, is that when uh, the staff report does come back, I would definitely like to direct staff and hopefully council would see that to have that integration. And I don't want to obviously, um, you know, depress the uh, the site or, or, you know, make it less beautiful. But uh, I just think that that interaction is really what caught my excitement for the partnership here down at the, at the H block. So uh, take, take that for what you paid for that. Um, and then uh, I guess, you know what, I just have a bunch of design questions and if it's preliminary design and we've got lots of opportunity to go through that, um, I would say uh, to be continued. Thanks, okay. Councillor McCann. Thank uh, you. Are there other questions of the presenters? Okay, there have been many. Uh, sorry, Councillor Thompson, you haven't had a chance yet. Go ahead. Sorry, Mayor Lehman, thanks. Um, on slide three, I think it is, it states all the programs. Um, yeah, slide three. Um, with a lot of these right now running out of the plaza or the mall, um, would they continue or are you looking to unite everything in this building or are you going to continue programs in other locations? Thank you for that. Yes. Thank you for that question, uh, Councillor Thompson. The, the plan right now is that we would continue to operate our programs and services out of the Bayfield Mall, um, but we will also collaborate on youth services at the, at the site. So we are not uh, building more administrative offices per se to run all of our programs and services out of the, the downtown Y. It would be um, mostly program and service space. We would bring in some of the youth programming uh, services and programs as needed. Uh, but we would, we would be keeping those programs and services at the Bayfield uh, Mall and other program areas across the city where we have um, other programs that we offer. So uh, we're not moving everything under one, uh, one roof. Uh, just a follow-up, Marilyn. 
Um, is that strategic or like just thinking, you know, with the ask and, you know, the financial restraints on the world right now, not just your organization, but lots, would it not be a better business model to have everything under one instead of paying leases and stuff like that and utilizing staff? Yes, thank you for that follow-up question. Our, our programs and services in the mall really complement uh, other services that are that are currently in the mall. So we also have our uh, newcomer and immigrant services there. We also have our um, English as a second language programs there. And uh, we deliver you know, similar programs across all of these populations. And so we do feel that it makes sense for us to stay in the the north end of Barrie, I guess, and at the Bayfield Mall for now for those programs. There's a lot of synergies in housing those programs together um, and uh, not, not the space for the downtown Y. And we hadn't considered that to go into the, like, when we were thinking about the design elements a, a few years ago. Perfect, thanks. Um, I will say it's exciting and uh, it's a great, um, building. Um, I'm a little bit nervous about the ask, I'll be honest. Um, it's, uh, we just went through the budget and, uh, you know, and, you know, I'm a believer that, you know, 2.5 coming from the county. Um, I'm not aware of a reserve of the county that doesn't, you know, incorporate Barry's money already. Um, I know lots of people say, well, other people pay, but I've looked through all the finances of the county and some of the money is already our taxpayers. Um, so like I said, I don't want to uh, rain on the parade. It's been a great positive presentation, but uh, I just think that it's quite an ask and, you know, with the land and everything, but that's always for another time. And I, I think it's a great um, asset to the city and I think it's great in the downtown, but uh I do have some challenges with the asking, I'll be honest. So, but I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Thompson. Any other questions for members of council? Okay, many have been asked, and uh, I, I've got a few others, but I'll send them by email. I think I just wanted tonight to to thank you. Uh, first of all, for answering all of these questions from council, I think some thoughtful. I think you can tell by the questions some really thought, uh, thoughtful questions interested in both design issues, but also the service provision. And, um, you know, when the opportunity arose because uh, of the developer not moving forward uh, on Bradford with your site um, for the, the, the potential to consider the H block, I mean, this just makes so much sense. And the more you did your presentation tonight, the more I came to see the synergies with the library right next door, how our downtown's gonna have two great public buildings of, of kind of similar scale and similar uh, orientation, um, you know, buildings that welcome newcomers, buildings that welcome people from all income backgrounds, uh, buildings that deliver services uh, to people in our community and focus on kids. Uh, and of course, the Y is the biggest provider of daycare in Simcoe County. Um, and uh, I echo the compliments, uh, Ms. Schreiner, on the um, design. And I'm sorry, I failed to introduce you. I think you're also an associate professor or professor at Waterloo uh, in the School of Architecture, if I'm not mistaken. And I, I, I really uh, do appreciate you being here to, to um, show us through the model and also outline the thinking behind the design. Because, you know, one of the odd pieces of this is we've got John Edwin Coop Park. Uh, sort of sitting right beside the library, but it is an opportunity for a little urban green space that, you know, you can kind of get your arms around when it comes to uh, kids using that space as uh, for the child care uh, and for the wise uh, child and youth programming. Um, so there's so much carry over to the library and I agree with Councillor Aylwin, if there's ever been a moment to consider a, a door at the west end of the uh, lobby of the library somewhere around our community room uh, or the office area so that uh, there's an, another pedestrian connection in. That's a great, great thing for us to think about after tonight. But all in all, uh, thank you so much for answering all the questions, for giving us uh, a view of the project and my compliments as well to Brian uh, for your work and your leadership on the capital campaign and to Lynn for your leadership uh, at the board level. And Jill, I know this has been two of the most difficult years for any nonprofit. I know it was extremely difficult to pivot with the shutdown of so many facilities uh, and still try and uh, you guys were the only organization that put your hand up for childcare 
when the ask went out for first responders. And we really appreciate that uh, and all of the work you did during COVID to keep the organization uh, you know, alive and moving forward. And now to be back with us uh, with this project in this condition is testament to, all three of, to what all three of you have done over the last two years. So thank you for that. Uh, and uh, Brian, I'll give you last word. Well, I just wanted to recognize Anna Cheney. She's my co-chair. I don't want to have Anna mad at me. Thank you. <laughs> Nobody would ever want that. Uh, yeah, no, tremendous work, especially during the quiet phase and, and every bit of success in the public phase. Uh, and council will be discussing this matter. It looks like in uh, the third week of January. Uh, but thank you so much tonight for being here. And with that, I think we'll move on with our remaining agenda for city council. Thank you. All right, members of council, uh, with the presentation then concluded, um, we are at inquiries of staff. Deputy Mayor Ward, do you have any inquiries of city staff? I have none. Members of council. Councillor Kungel. Thank you, Mayor Lehman. Um, through you, maybe um, this fits Ms. Schlichter. I've got a question about business statuses. So. Well, I've seen some great social media by Deputy Mayor Barry Ward around opening um, restaurants and businesses. Um, I've also seen some close. I can think of two in particular in Ward 3 where I've seen businesses close. And I was wondering, do we have um, any statistics or do we have any um, information that identifies when a business moves out of the city or closes for a particular reason? just to appreciate if there are pressures on that business that might be good for us uh, to understand from a, an employment and also from uh, just our economic impact. Ms. Lichter. Uh, thank you, Mayor Lehman, through you to Councillor Kungel. There isn't a formal uh, registration or notification process that's required when a business chooses to close. Uh, we did undertake this year a um, business data survey uh, for the very first time, which was really that door-to-door, -door, looking at all of the commercial spaces, validating who was there. We're just in process of validating how we put that some of that forward in, in the public fashion. So uh, I would say once we start doing the intent is that that would be a year-over-year -year exercise. That will give us, I think, a far greater sense of where some of those transitions are. Um, certainly through our small business center, when we hear of a business or when we have conversation with business, but there isn't really a formal tracking mechanism or notification. So uh, a lot of it is collected uh, anecdotally, but again, through this data survey, we're hoping as we get through some of that year over year, that we'll have a better sense of what the, those transitions look like. Thank you, Mr. Lichter. No further questions. Thanks, Councillor Kungel. Uh, somebody else indicated they had an inquiry of staff. Oh, maybe not. Okay, uh, moving on to announcements. Deputy Mayor Ward, any announcements? I do have one. The, uh, on our last council meeting of the year, I just want to tell people that on Wednesday, January 12th, we're gonna be holding a joint town hall meeting between uh, Ward 3 Councillor Kungel, Ward 5 Councillor Thompson, myself and yourself, Mayor Lehman. Um, it'll be at 7 p.m. Unfortunately, it has to be another virtual meeting, but we will um, it will be taking up your questions from for at least an hour, maybe an hour and a half, and uh, there'll be more details in the new year. Thank you. Thanks for that, Deputy Mayor Ward. Yep, we're still chasing Councillor Jim Harris's record for uh, online town hall attendance, but uh, I'm sure between the four of us, maybe we can uh, give him a run for his money. Uh, other announcements, Councillor Natalie Harris. Thank you, Mayor Lehman. Um, I just wanted to give an announcement that uh, the John Howard Society and the Gilbert Center are working on opening up a warming center um, for our homeless, hopefully by next week, but they're looking for volunteers right now. So you can sign up online. Um, you can go to my city council Facebook page. The link is there also on Twitter. Um, and if you have any questions, just reach out to me. I can uh, provide uh, any information. Quick question that people are asking, are, is there training provided? What kind of experience do you need? Um, it's it's um, 
uh, I, it's great if you do have uh, experience um, helping our homeless. If you don't, that's okay. And training will be provided with respect to uh, providing the lock zone, et cetera, those types of things from the Gilbert Center and the John Howard Society. So please reach out and that would be wonderful. Awesome. Thank you very much for that, Councilor Harris. Any other announcements, members of City Council? Okay, seeing none, uh, I do have a few. Um, first of all, during the holiday season, this is very exciting. Meridian Square will be playing host to an interactive light display. Maybe you've got a sneak peek already. It started today. It's called Islands of Warmth, uh, and it is December 13th until January 3rd. It includes an electrifying campfire made up of 154 incandescent light bulbs. It comes to life by music and visitors movements. It's actually an interactive piece uh, out of a, it's a Canadian group that developed this. Uh, and uh, uh, we have brought it to a berry. The island of warmth that reaches its peak when everyone around it moves in sync, turning the installation into a symphony for the eyes and ears. For further information, you can visit berry.ca slash culture slash festivals. This is uh, part of uh, the holiday celebrations in our downtown core. Submissions are also now being accepted from artists for video or animated artwork that responds to the theme of light to be displayed during the months of February and March 2022. This is part of Hello Winter, uh, the Hello Winter event in the city that is uh, celebrating the city of Barrie as a winter city, expanding on our very successful Winterfest, of course. Uh, and uh, the free and accessible programming that will be part of that will feature that central theme of light to brighten the winter season and inspire hope and resiliency as our community continues to move through the pandemic. The program will feature up to five selected video or animated artworks that will be projected in windows throughout downtown Barrie. Deadline for submission is a week from today, December 20th, 2021. So if you're an artist with video or interactive light artwork, animated artwork uh, that responds to that theme, uh, give this a look online and the submission deadline is next Monday. City of Barrie will be welcoming New Year's Eve with activities and theme programming in Barrie's downtown and neighborhood community centers. To ring in the new year, residents can choose their location uh, in the downtown or the Holly and East Bayfield community centers to enjoy family-friendly events and busker performances. Uh, please stay tuned for information around this as COVID uh, regulations and restrictions are somewhat uh, in flux at the moment, uh, but um, the uh, outdoor events, of course, are part of uh, all three locations. Uh, and we will be advising in terms of uh, what's going on over the uh, new year, finalizing over the next couple of weeks. Uh, there is information on the city's website, barry.ca slash happy holidays. Submissions for the arts and culture investment program are now being accepted. Program's goal is to strengthen Barry's arts and culture sector through strategic investments in the work of artists and creative organizations. Deadline for submissions there is January 31st at 4.30, and you can get information on that online at barry.ca slash cultural grants. City of Barry invites students from kindergarten to grade 12 to share their love of the city with the Love Barry contest. That contest runs between December 10th, that was Friday, and January 28th, 2022. Kindergarten to grade six students can submit a piece of artwork. Grade seven and eight students submit a short story. Grade nine to 12 can submit a photo. All the details are online at barry.ca slash myberry. Throughout the month of December, we have two hours of free on-street parking downtown to support local downtown businesses. Uh, a reminder as winter progresses and curb collections can become difficult to uh, make sure your bins are out of the path of the snow equipment. Uh, if you have any bins that didn't blow away on Saturday, um, please make sure they are out of the way of the snow equipment when the weather uh, does a, um, present a, a challenge and, and give us snow on collection days. Uh, also, for those who may be struggling with uh, snow at the end of their driveway, a uh, reminder of Snow Angels Canada. That's an online platform that helps us connect to volunteers who will help you clear your driveway if you need that assistance. Snowangelscanada.ca. Um, nominations are open until the end of the week for the Mayor's Innovation Awards. Uh, celebrating the most creative solutions in business, individuals, and community groups in the city. Uh, you can get information at investberry.ca slash innovation awards. And a reminder that the Barry Police has its 2021 Community Safety Survey open until the end of this week. That's on the police's website, which is barrypolice.ca 
slash survey. Before we move on to the bylaws, this will be the last city council meeting of 2021. On behalf of city council, I of course want to take this opportunity to extend best wishes for a safe and happy holiday season and a very Merry Christmas to all the citizens of Barry. Planning committee will be meeting tomorrow night though, so you haven't quite seen the last of us yet, uh, but general committee and city council won't resume until Monday, January 10th. So we'll go to Deputy Mayor Ward with the bylaws. Uh, yes, Deputy Mayor Ward, go ahead. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Thompson, that Lee be granted to introduce the following bills and these bills we read a first, second and third time this day and finally passed. Bills 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, or 110 and 111. Thank you, it's moved by Deputy Mayor Ward, seconded by Councillor Thompson, that, that Lee be granted to introduce the following bills and these bills be read a first, second and third time this day and finally passed. Bill 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110 and 111. Comments or questions? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor of the bylaws? Is anyone opposed? None, that carries. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Ward. Moved by myself, second by Councillor Thompson, that Lee be granted to introduce the following bill, and this will be read right a first, second, and third time this day and finally passed, Bill 112. Thank you, it is moved by Deputy Mayor Ward, seconded by Councillor Thompson, that Lee be granted to introduce the following bill, and this bill will be read a first, second, and third time this day and finally passed, Bill 112, the confirmation bylaw. Comments or questions? Seeing none, those in favor? Is anyone opposed? None, that carries unanimously. Thank you all. We will see you tomorrow night for planning committee. And can I have a motion to adjourn? Moved by Councillor Jim Harris, seconded by Councillor Natalie Harris. Thank you very much, members of council. We'll see you tomorrow for planning.